So we have started the past the hour. So please welcome Paul Amazona, uh, who's a volunteer worker with DataKind, and that's that's his sort of superman job. <laughs> Data is working in an investment bank. Yeah, investment bank. Okay, so Paul is going to uh, oh, I forgot the title now. Thank you. Docker pipeline for reproducible research. Docker uh, uh, workshop that you can follow along here uh, or even after the session. Yep. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, thanks for coming. Uh, this is a workshop. So, if you haven't done so, uh, we need uh, accounts for the various platforms. These platforms. GitHub, KIO, and Play with Docker will going to use it later. So while I introduce the overview, uh, you can set up if you don't have yet, or you can go to the tiny URL workshop dash accounts uh, to, or take a snapshot of this. So Docker pipeline for reproducible research. Um, I'm Paul, as uh, I was introduced a while ago. I'm a developer and also a core, core volunteer with uh, DataKind. So DataKind is a nonprofit. We help connect data science volunteers with nonprofit organizations to help them analyze their data for good. You can learn more about DataKind in tomorrow's session uh, in FOSS Asia. Um, Raymond and uh, Wei Yang will be there to uh, explain more about DataKind. So what we're going to do here today, um, Docker for reproducibility. Um, I'm going to do a recap from what I've shared last year in the, in the video. It's also uh, located in uh, the abstract of this talk. And after that, we're going to dive in straight into the workshop so that we have uh, more time. We only have, I think, around 55 minutes for this uh, workshop. So there are two waiting times uh, during the workshop while we build our images. So during that time, we'll utilize that to discuss more on what is data dive. And then the second waiting time, we'll use that to discuss uh, data dive workflows, which we are planning to do uh, this year during a data dive. So this is a recap um, as part of uh, my video um, last year. So what do we mean by reproducibility? In the da data kind context, we expect the result of a volunteer's analysis on his machine to be reproducible in another volunteer's uh, machine. So um, volunteer's machine or a nonprofit representative's uh, machine. So that at least we don't have these issues like, hey, it only works in this volunteer's machine, but when we transfer the notebook or the script in another volunteer's machine, it doesn't work anymore because of the dependency in the library, dependency in the package, the versions and all. So we don't want that to happen. That's why we want as much as possible to promote reproducibility among our volunteers in DataKind. So this is the link to the... So uh, in DataKind, uh, previously, we tried to promote reproducibility using um, GitHub uh, by uh, versioning our codes and scripts, and notebooks and all. And then last year we realized that having versions for the scripts and codes is not enough because a number of the issues that you'll face when doing this analysis or reproducing the analysis of another volunteer is also due to environments because when you try to run the script, you'll notice that you have dependency of uh, another version of the package, another dependency of the version of the library, and so on and so forth. So we realized that apart from versioning the code and scripts, we want to version also the environment. So at least um, when we run the script or code, it will run uh, smoothly because the environment is also versioned and tested for that matter. Um, last year, I did this um, um, video um, to explain more about Docker. So if you're interested about Docker basics and more discussion on reproducibility, you can check out this link, uh, tiny URL, Docker for volunteers, to check out more. Uh, discuss more on the Docker basics here. We'll focus more on the continuous integration pipeline that we're using in DataKind. So we'll get to know how we use uh, KIO to uh, do reproducibility and uh, continuous integration. Um, this is the link to the workshop material so that if you want to follow along uh, as I do the demo, uh, you can try it also. The, all of the instructions that you need are all in the, in the document, so you can follow along. You can 
work on it um, on your own time or you can follow along with me or you can also work on it after this session all the links that you need or all the the um, um, accounts that you need are all in the cloud so you don't have to install anything in your uh, machine so we'll start with the first task that we want to do as part of this uh, we need to set up our docker file so I'm just going to follow the the workshop material everyone has the link already right uh, for for the workshop material that's tinyurl.com slash docker lab and you, you'll have the material there we'll do with the first task um, the first task will you can just uh, read this on your own the overview that gives the context of this workshop and then the prerequisites I assume you already have um, github kio and corresponding uh, um, what you call this uh, lab uh, play with docker account so first we'll need to set up the docker file um, you can fork this um, repository so we need to go to our uh, github account and then uh, go here I'll just copy this By the way, if anyone is stuck somewhere, just raise your hand. Uh, we have mentors uh, around, Yoke, Raymond, uh, at the back, uh, that will help you if, in case you're stuck. So we've now um, cloned the repository in our account, GitHub account, containers itself. Just want to show you something. Click on the workshop folder, demo Docker setup, and then we'll open this Docker file. So. In this Docker file, you see the base image that we're using. We're using Jupyter Minimal Notebook. As much as possible, yes? The font size, just a moment. Let me just, it's better, yeah. Um, so this one, um, as much as possible, uh, we want to have the image small. So that's why we're using Minimal Notebook, so that at least we don't have the overhead of additional um, packages that is uh, in that base image and apart from that uh, you can already use this as uh, as this highlighted text but since we are promoting reproducibility even the base image we want to get uh, a corresponding version so that when we replicate it later we can uh, re replicate the corresponding environment that we used for this uh, environment so the highlighted uh, portion, that's the version of that base image. Now here, since we're going to use a Python notebook for this, uh, all the packages that we need for this particular analysis uh, will store in a requirements.txt file. So here, the highlighted, I'll just go um, one folder up a bit, demo docker setup, and then I'll just open this uh, requirements.txt. In this requirements that text, you'll see the corresponding libraries that we need to install for Python. And note that um, we also include the versions. So versioning in, in, in the data kind is really important to promote reproducibility so that we know which versions work with which uh, analysis. So this is our, Docker, uh, our, our requirements that text, which has the Python uh, libraries that we need with their corresponding version. So we're currently in step uh, task one. Step one, we've done. Uh, we've done uh, step two, which is examining the Docker file. And then now we're, our Docker file is ready. We can proceed uh, with syncing our GitHub to the KIO. KIO we're going to use for our continuous integration. So task two, I'm just going to update the slide going to build docker image using uh, continuous integration via uh, KIO so KIO I will go there so here we'll need to create a new repository as explained in the document I'll just click this so in the repository create new repository just type uh, workshop dash notebook 
this is our, the name of our repository and then we need to uh, put this as, as public so KIO is like github um, if you put your repository as public then you can get to use it for free so that's what I, I like about it um, and then uh, we're going to uh, also link to a github repository push so that the, the github um, repository that we uh, forked a while ago any changes to that uh, will have this build automatically to give us the new image okay and then create public repository so um, this option, uh, authorized score OS, it doesn't appear now on my side because I already set up a while ago. But in case it's uh, you setting it this up uh, newly, um, you just need to authorize score OS so that you have a connection between KIO and your uh, GitHub account. Yep. So f at this point, we're on step six. I'm going to uh, select our organization. In this case, our KIO account. Just click continue. And then uh, we're going to uh, select our repository that we forked a while ago, Contain Yourself. And then here, uh, you have the option to configure the trigger. So here there are two options, trigger for all branches, and the other one is trigger for only uh, the branch, uh, corresponding branch. So previously in the last year, I think er in the early days, we used to use trigger for all branches and tags. And we had a problem on that because in, in um, the data kind repository, right? Uh, if we have multiple branches, any change to any of those branches, if there's any change that was submitted to GitHub, our build would, will unnecessarily uh, build a, an image, which is not really uh, good. So ideally, we want only to trigger the build whenever there's a change in the master branch. So we're going to limit this to uh, check-ins to a master branch only. So I'll just put heads, master, and then you'll see matching master so that it will only build if it's a uh, change in the master branch. Hit continue. And then here we'll just select the Docker file, which is um, the one that we intend, workshop demo Docker, Docker file. And then continue. And then the context, the folder where our Docker file is located. Hit continue. And then you'll notice there's an optional robot account. The robot account, you'll just need this if you have a base repository that is uh, private. But since we don't use a private base repository, uh, the Jupyter um, Minimal Notebook a while ago is a public one. So we don't need this, so we can skip this. Just hit continue, and then we're ready to go. So just click um, here. So we're on step 12. Just click continue. And then click the, this link to go back to the build page. Then click start new build. And then uh, click run trigger now and then select a branch. Here we'll just choose master, start build, and the expectation is it should be building right now. So in case you don't have a feedback right now like what I have, just try to refresh the page. We should see like three dots uh, moving, this one. That means that our current uh, image is being built. So what I like about KIO is um, if you click this build ID, it will also show you uh, what's currently going on. It shows you the lagging. So what it does it currently is trying to pull that base image, that Jupyter Notebook base image that we've set up a while ago. And um, you'll see how the progress until it uh, assembles and then um, installs the necessary Python packages a while ago. So while this, this the build usually takes around uh, six to seven minutes. So we'll just let it build. And while uh, building, let's discuss more on the, on the uh, data kind uh, stuff. So while the image is being built, uh, we'll, I'll share more about data dive. So what is data dive? 
A day to dive is a weekend long event where a nonprofit organization uh, works alongside data science volunteers, developers, designers uh, to analyze data and gain insight into their programs, the communities they serve, and um, more. So last year, we had two data dives uh, organized. The first one was held at Expedia. Uh, we've partnered with three nonprofit organizations back then. That was, I think, Red Cross, um, Ojoy, and, um, and Children's Society. And then we had a second, I think, in October, if I remember correctly. Uh, the second data dive uh, was organized uh, in NVPC. And we worked with NVPC, NVPC Data, National Volunteer and Philanthropy uh, Center during that time. So it's a fun event. Uh, if you get a chance to join uh, one of these, uh, I encourage you to do so. Um, the, there are blog posts for those events. Uh, I've ha we have tiny URL for those, tiny URL uh, slash data dive one or tiny URL data dive two for the uh, blog post uh, that we've done for uh, last year. So we can uh, read about those. So um, during this data dive, uh, we've learned some uh, things uh, also uh, on the Docker uh, side of things. So last year, we did uh, uh, promote on our volunteers to use Docker for reproducibility so that we can easily reproduce the analysis. However, these are the things that we've learned. Um, not all volunteers use Docker. And there are some issues. It may be because of the installation. And also, it may be because of tools preference. Um, so far, we've, support, we've tried to support multiple operating systems like Mac OS, um, Linux, or Windows. Um, a number of them, we've, we've been able to set up Docker properly. Some, we had, we had issues. So not all of the volunteers ab are able to use the Dockerized tools that we have. And the second thing that we learned is doing reproducibility exercise after the event is quite painful. So the second data type, the one with NVPC, uh, we didn't really plan to use Docker at, at first. But after the data dive event, we want to reproduce the results. But then uh, after the event, um, the, the author might not be there already. So we tried to analyze uh, what's the intention of the author, uh, what version of the library he has used on, on, on a particular analysis. So it's very, very uh, tedious. So trial and error for checking the library if it works on the new machine is quite uh, laborious. But it's OK. It's lessons learned. So what we'll do is we'll use the lessons learned and improve our workflow uh, in this year's uh, data dive. So we'll talk about more on that later. So uh, we'll check our build if it has uh, completed. So here, you can see that uh, Docker build completed and pushed. I'll just go back to our uh, build page. So here, uh, we have the build. Um, we can see the um, white arrow with a white checkbox uh, on the green background. Let's just uh, do the next thing, which is we need to do the labeling. This is to um, promote the versioning in our environment. So you can see the latest here. Uh, what we need to do is click this settings button, uh, add new tag. So here in DataKind, we try to use semantic versioning. So we have three numbers. The first number is the for major changes. Second is for minor um, backwards compatibility. And third is if there's any fixes that we need to do. But since this is our first image, I'll just put 1.0.0 and create a tag. And then you'll see the version number here for this particular uh, repo workshop dash notebook. So let's see where we are in the documentation. Uh, we've added new tag. Uh, we've done this. Uh, we've checked that we have the repository tag and version. Now that we have the version notebook, uh, we can proceed in curating uh, volunteers' deliverables. So deliverables could be uh, data visualization, a Python script, a Python notebook, or uh, whatever the volunteer um, delivers for that matter. That will be our task three, curating of deliverables. So I'll just update this, curate deliverables. So in this context, this is usually what the Docker captain or data dive Docker captain uh, is doing during data dives. Um, they will be helping in curating the deliverables uh, done by the volunteers. So here, um, 
in a normal data dive, uh, what usually happens is Docker captains will have their own Docker setup on their machines so that they can easily uh, replicate. But for this workshop, um, so that we don't um, install uh, anything on the machine, we'll try to use Play with Docker so that it uh, will do everything in the cloud. And then we save a lot of bandwidth by doing that. So here, just log into your uh, Play with Docker account and click Start, and then we'll create a new instance for that. So uh, here I have the Play with Docker account. I'll just uh, start. Oops. Let me refresh it. Maybe a lot of people. Okay, good. Maybe a lot of people are using uh, Play with Docker right now. So, <laughs> add new instance. Yep. That's, a, that's a good thing to know. Okay, um, so it will um, show you a console, and then uh, what we need to do is uh, we're going to clone our um, contain yourself repository. I'll just uh, click here, and then be sure to put your GitHub account in the path. real data scientist okay done just need to ensure that the repo is there ls contain yourself okay we're good um, back to the documentation um, we can run the docker uh, image that uh, we will pull the docker image and then run accordingly in our console Just paste this here, and then don't forget to put your KIO account where we built our image a while ago. Your data scientist. Okay, uh, and then click enter. So while it's pushing and downloading the image, let me just uh, share to you. Uh, Docker command. So, 80 here is uh, from Play with Docker. Uh, so, that's the port. And then it's uh, mapped to the 8888 uh, of Jupyter, um, which is in the container. And we'll, we've also mapped the volume. So, this first part on the left uh, is the path inside uh, Play with Docker, which is mapped to the folder inside the container, which is the Jobian work. And then um, this version, if you notice, is the version that we built recently, a while ago, uh, with uh, KIO. So let's check the, if it has pulled, uh, com if the pull is uh, complete. So currently it's, it's pulling the image, the layers, and then once this is done, we're able to run our uh, Jupyter uh, notebook. So download complete, we still have a few more to go. Okay, I think it's got stuck. I'll just pull it again. Are you guys able to pull the image from your build repository?
I'll try one more, otherwise I'll proceed with the recording of this, the salmon. Yeah, I think it uh, has some issues pulling the image. So what I'll do is um, I'll just play this um, pre-recorded uh, curation of the deliverables. So as you can see in the screen, um, we're in task three where we're going to curate the deliverables. And then of course this one we explained. Uh, let me just fast forward. Uh, opening the Docker uh, part, let me just. So we just copy the the. Um, let me just uh, forward it a bit. Okay, so it's building. Okay, so once the build is complete, you'll see a token available for your uh, Jupyter Notebook. Just click on that, and then uh, just copy the token. And then back to the Play With Docker, click the 8 port 80 link at, abo at above, and then place the token in the token um, uh, text box. And then you'll see this screen with uh, um, both the notebooks as, uh, as explained in the documentation. So we're going to check volunteer one's notebook first and then do a run all in the notebook. And then we should see this uh, visualization at the end. So clicking that notebook will open a new tab and then we have this uh, a notebook which we're just getting the data and then uh, using pandas and json to slice and dice and then um, that's the table that we're getting and then we're going to uh, demo the group by function and then uh, do the demo using Plotly which is one of the libraries that we're using for this. So uh, just click cell and then run all and we should be uh, seeing that visualization at the bottom once the uh, cells are run so this is what we've got that means we're able to reproduce volunteer ones um, um, analysis so we just created a stack graph using Plotly for this Now, the next one is 
uh, once we've replicated or produced volunteer once uh, analysis, we're going to uh, also um, uh, reproduce volunteers to analysis. Note that once the, the uh, analysis has been uh, successfully reproduced, usually Docker captains will indicate which version of the environment uh, we used for that. So we'll proceed with volunteer tools a notebook. We'll close this. Go to home and then open the volunteer tools uh, notebook. So for volunteer two, uh, same thing. We'll still get the data, uh, same data as we used by volunteer one, and then um, we'll still use the same packages like pandas and JSON. The only difference is um, here we're going to calculate percentage for each year for uh, the Red Cross uh, data, and then uh, use. Uh, Bouquet for doing the data visualization instead of Plotly. So uh, just click cell and then do run all. And then while um, that is running, the expectation is um, you'll see that it's not working because we don't have a bouquet uh, package in the image. So uh, what we'll do here is uh, it's the same thing as what we have. Uh, in the documentation, uh, we have an issue. We have an environment issue. So let's proceed with this, uh, how to solve environment issue. So I'll just go back to the um, documentation again. That is task, uh, task, uh, task four, resolve environment issue. So the issue that we face here is we cannot run or replicate or reproduce volunteer tools uh, notebook because uh, we, don't, we have a missing um, a, like a package called Bouquet. But note that uh, in the actual scenarios, in actual data dive, uh, the issues that we face is not as simple as this. Sometimes it's not only missing libraries. Sometimes uh, there could be binaries that are also missing. So we need to uh, um, explore and that, talk to the author, and then try to resolve the issues during that time. But for the workshop, to make it simple, um, uh, we have a missing uh, bouquet library. So what we need to do is go back to our GitHub account. I'll just go here. And then in the GitHub, in our requirements folder, our requirements file, uh, we just update uh, the file. Click here, edit this file. And then here, notice that we don't have bouquet yet here. So we'll need to put uh, an additional uh, package called bouquet for the data visualization of volunteer two, and then place the corresponding version. So essentially, we found this out, of, for example, by talking to the volunteer, hey, uh, what version of bouquet did you use to replicate your um, uh, data visualization? So once you have this, uh, we're going to uh, commit the changes. So add info, added bouquet, and then uh, commit the changes. So once we've committed the changes here, uh, the expectation is we should have um, um, AO should pick up this change and build a new image correspondingly. So let me just uh, expand that. In our build uh, page, we should see a new build running. So added bouquet. So currently, uh, it's uh, building a new version for our um, uh, image for the for this uh, workshop notebook repository. So while that is uh, being um, built, let's explore a bit on the new stuff that we're exploring for this year. So while the image is being built, let's d discuss data dive uh, workflows that we're planning. So this year, because of the issues that we faced or we discussed a while ago, right, uh, we tried to experiment a uh, new approach. So apart, uh, um, instead of volunteers directly checking into the master branch, we will try to uh, introduce a new, um, let me just show this, a new um, item in the workflow which is uh, curating of uh, uh, deliverables. So here, you'll see that, um, let's say, the volunteer has already done uh, the deliverable. The deliverable could be um, notebook, script, or visualization. Uh, what the volunteer will do, instead of checking in uh, directly to the, or, or doing a PR or pull request to the ma a master branch, uh, he or she will uh, 
uh, do a PR on the integration branch. Then in, in, in the integration branch, we will have another role, which is the Docker Captain, which will pull those deliverables. And then uh, what he will do, or he, he or she will do is, he, um, he or she will try to reproduce the results or uh, analysis uh, from that uh, branch, either uh, using the new image or the environment that uh, we have. If there's any issue, uh, let's say missing libraries and so on, then uh, what the Docker captain will do is it, we will update the image um, file, the Docker uh, file, and then add the corresponding missing uh, library there and rebuild. And then hopefully in the new version of the image, uh, we will be able to reproduce the analysis of the, or the deliverable of the uh, volunteer. Once everything is good, next step is to push the approved deliver deliverable to the GitHub main branch, do a PR there. And then we have a GitHub admin to uh, assess the changes. If everything looks good, then it goes straight to our main branch. That way, uh, we can sort of ensure that whatever is in our master branch is reproducible. Yep. So let's check whether, uh, oh, before we do that, uh, the Docker captain has also a special uh, workflow of its own. So apart from um, creating and updating the Docker image uh, and curating the deliverables, uh, we also have this thing called uh, Docker overflow. It's a sort of stack overflow kind of thing during data type events so that if there are any frequently asked questions about Docker, let's say the volunteer choose to use Docker for doing the analysis, uh, if there are any fr frequently asked questions, he or she will just go to that Docker overflow and then uh, check if the issue was faced before and if there are common answers to those uh, issues. Yep. So let's uh, revisit our um, build. So here we have added the bouquet. What we're going to do here now is we're going to go to the tags again because we need to add in a new label. And here, if you notice, uh, you need, this is very important. You notice that uh, the latest here is 20 minutes ago. That is a lie, I think. <laughs> so uh, you need to refresh uh, the page because you need to ensure the latest is really the latest, right? So I'm going to refresh it and then the latest now says a minute ago. So that's good. Uh, what we'll do here is uh, we'll add a new tag and then I'll put 1.0.1 so create a tag so you have now a new tag called 1.0.1 .1, and what will happen next is we're going to pull that version in our play with docker and then check whether we can re replicate or reproduce volunteer tools uh, analysis let's check where we are in the documentation add a new tag we have 1.0.1 uh, because we're fixing the image. Uh, we have seen this uh, uh, version. Go back to your Play with Docker console. We'll kill the current one that is running and then run the new version. So let's go back and do accordingly. So go back to Play with Docker console. Uh, I'm going to kill this. And then uh, Control L to clear the stuff. And then, uh, so here it's pointing to 1.0.0, which is the old version, the version that doesn't work with Volunteer 2's uh, notebook. We're going to increment this with one, which is the new image that we've built and versioned. And then I'll click Enter. Hopefully this will work. So already exists because we already pulled uh, a while ago. And then, Let's give it a few moments. Otherwise, uh, I'll restart the, the pooling again. Let me refresh this.
I'm a bit impatient. I'll just try it again. Okay, one last try. If it doesn't work, I'll uh, move to the recording. Okay, I think it has problem pulling the image again. I'll just... Uh, anyone successfully pull the image? No? Okay. Um, mine uh, has some problems, so I'll just uh, proceed uh, with resolving the Docker issue with the new version. Uh, I'll just play this. So it basically we just pull it again uh, with that corresponding version, version 1.0.1, .1, and hit enter. So in the Docker uh, playground, uh, we'll just uh, remove the unnecessary uh, tabs that we used a while ago, and then uh, kill this. And then ensure that you have the correct version applied, 1.0.1, .1, which contains the, our, our bouquet um, package. And then once uh, it has completed loading uh, or uh, um, downloading the image, then we're able to uh, use the Jupyter accordingly. So it's near. it needs uh, 252 uh, MB. We're nearly there. So once that is complete, we have a, um, we need the token. So just click that link and then copy the token accordingly. And then click the port and then pass the copied token in the screen. So we're not going to run again Volunteer 1's um, notebook since that already is working in the previous image. What we'll do now is to uh, try to see if this new image version is able to resolve uh, the issue that we faced a while ago with Volunteer 2's notebook. Yep. So we'll need to click the notebook of Volunteer 2, Analysis from Volunteer 2 uh, IPython notebook and then just basically run all. This is based from the documentation that you have. So we'll click this and here uh, this is a volunteer tools notebook. So we're going to uh, click cell and then run all. It will run all the cells uh, of volunteer tools notebook and as you can see uh, we're able to replicate now what volunteer 2 has uh, done so our adding bouquet uh, package resolved that issue and then we have this uh, new image which is w version 1.0.1 .1, which is now able to uh, replicate volunteer 2's analysis yep 
So that's donation percentage per year. And then, yeah. So back to uh, our documentation. So this is what uh, we've done so far. So we have four tasks in this workshop. Uh, we had set up the Docker file in GitHub, uh, which is basically the Docker file, the base image, which has a version Docker image as well. We place all the Python libraries and Python uh, packages that we need for the analysis in GitHub. And then task two, we did connect the uh, Docker file that we have in GitHub to KIO to have a continuous integration. And then after that, uh, we tried to put on our Docker captain hat, which is to curate deliverables of volunteers. We tried with uh, volunteer one, it worked. Unfortunately, uh, in the first try, it didn't work with volunteer two. Why? Because we have missing packages. So what we did was to resolve the environment issue, which is task four. So we went back to GitHub, added the missing package, and then we submit it. But since we have continuous integration, after submitting in GitHub, it automatically triggers the build in KIO. So after the new image is built in KIO, uh, we try to put the version, which is 1.01. Uh, we are using semantic versioning. Once that is done, we're able to pull the new version in our Play With Docker, and then we're able to reproduce the analysis of Volunteer 2. So that's good. Uh, so if you've done this, congratulations. You've just completed the Docker Pipeline workshop. Uh, if you want to check more on, let's say you want to, if you're keen to volunteer as a Docker captain in one of our data dives, um, check out our Meetup page. We might have, uh, uh, we haven't announced yet, I think, uh, our data dive, but it's somewhere around April. So subscribe to this um, Meetup uh, page and then you'll be able to be notified once we have the data type. Yep. Cool. Oh, any questions so far? I th that's the end of the workshop, basically. So we have a yeah, few minutes are early than expected. Yay. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Any, any questions? Yeah, so if you haven't done this uh, in this session, uh, the materials are still available. You can uh, try it after this uh, uh, also. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody. Oh. Thanks for attending. Thanks for Thank you.